Bismillah, Alhamdulillah, Wassalatu wassalamu ala Sayyidina Muhammad Rasulillah. I begin with the name of Allah, all praise belongs to Allah, and may peace and blessings be upon the Prophet Muhammad, for he is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah. At this point, you should be very familiar with al idafa al idafa what we called an adjunct construction. You can say the adjunct construction. What is this? This is when you take two nouns and you combine them. For example, daj. Daj means crown. Al-Malik. Al-Malik means the king. If we combine them, we get Dajul Maliki. Dajul Maliki or Dajul Malik. This means the crown of the king. So this is a noun and this is a noun. And we learned that the second noun in an idafa is always in the halatul jar, the genitive case, indicated by that kasra there. The second noun is always in the genitive case. So this is the idafa. This lesson is about one specific word. It comes up a lot in the Arabic language, and that word is kul. Kul. Gaf, lam with a shadda. What does this word mean? It literally means totality. Fancy word. Totality. You can say all. Sometimes this word kul, it means each, or you can say every, every. For example, if you say kullu ahad, kullu ahad, this means every one. This is an idafa because this is a noun and the word ahad is a noun. So you technically should say kullu ahadin, kullu ahadin. But you'll notice it's not like the other idafas we've seen throughout the lessons. You don't say the kul of ahad. That just doesn't sound right. So we just translate it as every one, every one. But with that said, it's still in idafa. That's why you see the double kasra here. Ahadin, because it's in the genitive case, halatul jar. Here's another one for you. Kullu shay'in. Kullu shay'in. Or kullu shay'. Kullu shay. If you're ending on this word here. Kullu shay. What does this mean? Every thing. Everything. Very common phrase in the Arabic language. Kullu ahad, everyone. Kullu shay, everything. Again, notice the double kasra here because it's the second noun in any dafa. Or you can say Kullu yaum. Kullu yaum. Ya, wow, meme. Kullu yaum means every day. Every day. You can say, for example, Kullu makan. Kullu makan. Every place. Or everywhere. Or you can say, Kullu rajul. Kullu rajul. Ra, jim, lam. Kullu rajul which means every man, every man. So this is a very common idafa, but it's not translated how we usually translate an idafa. Not the kul of ahad, it's just every one. But I want you to notice, the second noun in these idafas are all indefinite. Ahadin, yaumin, rajulin, shay'in, Makanin. They're all indefinite. And when the second noun in this idafa is indefinite, this is how you translate it. Each 
or you can say every. Every one, everything, every day, every man, every place, or everywhere, if you want to translate it like that. So that is kul. If we were to add the phrase kullu ahad into these sentences, what does it look like? Ja'a kullu ahad. What's happening here? This is the fa'al of this fi'al. This is the doer of this verb. And therefore, it takes a dhamma. Ja'a kullu ahad. Everyone arrived. Let's look at the next sentence here. Ra'aytu kulla ahad. Ra'aytu kulla ahad. I saw everyone. Here, this is in the halatun nasab, the associative case. So it's associated to this verb, but it's not the fa'il. Here, it's receiving the action of being seen. I saw. What did I see? Kulla ahad. I saw everyone. So notice, doma here, fatha there. And the last sentence here, marartu bi. Kulli ahad. I pass by everyone. Here, kasra, because it's in the genitive case. Halatul jar. So notice, this is an idafa. The second noun in an idafa is always going to be in the genitive case. Halatul jar. But the first noun, it could be rafa, nasab, or jar. It all depends on its usage in a sentence. Something to be mindful of. So that is kul in any dafa. It can mean each, it can mean every. And when that's the case, the second noun is indefinite. Now with that said, there's another way you can use this word kul. Kul sometimes means all. All of something. For example, Kullul jaysh. Kullul jaysh. Alif lam, jim, ya, shin. What does this mean? Kull here means all. Al jaysh means the army. All, the army. Here we can add that word of. All of the army. It goes back to how we usually translate any dafa. What's the difference between this and the previous phrases we saw? For example, Kullu ahad. What's the difference? Here, the second noun is indefinite. Everyone. Here, the second noun is definite. And so, because of the fact that it's definite, we translate this as all of the army. If it was not indefinite, like this, Kulujation, we would say every army. That's the difference. If it's indefinite, each army. If it's definite, all of the army. Very subtle, but it's a big difference. So, what are some other phrases? Like all of the army. We can say, for example, Kulu. Al-alam. Kullu al-alam. This means all of the world. All of the world. Notice al-flam. Al-alam. We can say, for example, Kullu al-bayt. Kullu al-bayt. All of the house. All of the house. Or we can say, for example, Kullu al Medina. Medina T. Kullu al Medina. All of the city. So if the second noun in this idafa has an alif and a lam, all. If it's indefinite, no alif lam, like 
kullu jayshin, you would say every army. But since it's definite here, all of the army. It almost looks identical, but there's a big difference in the Arabic language. So let's take that phrase, kullu jaysh, all of the army. How do we add that to these sentences? Ja'a kullul jaysh. Kullul jaysh. All of the army arrived. Notice the dhamma. Ra'aytu kullul jaysh. Notice the fatha. Ra'aytu kullul jaysh. I saw all of the army. Marartu bi kulli al jaysh. I passed by all of the army. Again, dhamma, fatha, kasra, it all depends on its function in a sentence. But that second noun is always in the genitive case, halatul jar. So that's that. Kul, a very popular word in the Arabic language. You can say kullu, kulla, kulli. It all depends on its usage in a sentence. And as we saw, if we say kullu madina, what does this mean? This means every city. Notice indefinite, every city. If we add an aleph and a lamb, what happens? Kullu al Madina. Slightly different meaning. What does this mean? All of the city. You can say the entire city. And that's the difference between the second noun being indefinite or the second noun being definite. You can say, for example, Kullu kitabin. What does that mean? Every book or each book. You can translate it as every book or each book. Versus Kullu al-kitab. Al-kitab. What does this mean? All of the book. And that is the word kul. And it pops up a lot in the Arabic language. And that's why I thought it's worth covering it on its own in this lesson. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ala ushabihi wa ala atba'ihi hatta yam al-qiyamati wa salam tasliman kathirah.